Hello everyone, this is Mr. Trudy. Today our video will be about translating a sentence from English to Latin. Translating a sentence from English to Latin involves many of the same steps as translating a sentence from Latin to English, but you have to make a few changes. So the first thing you do when translating from English to Latin is find your subject in your verb. It's actually two steps, but you have to treat it as a single step. We'll start down here with number five since it's a bit of a simpler sentence. So remember, English loves the word order, subject, verb, direct object, if we have an action verb, and then all of our sentences here will have a linking verb. So we'll have subject, linking verb, and then predicate nominative for these sentences. So looking at sentence five, we have the provinces are in Europe. So quickly diagramming it out here, the provinces would be our subject. It's right up there in the first spot. And R would be our verb. And we will pause there for the time being and come back to in Europe. Now let's identify our words here. So remember, R in English, just like in Latin, is third person. It's plural. It's tense. Remember, your tense for the first few lessons will always be present. And then translation. Instead of translating from Latin to English, here we have to do English to Latin. So we'll translate R into Latin by sunt. If you remember from earlier this week in class, in the earlier video, in Latin, we have something called subject verb agreement, which simply states that your subject and your verb will always be the same number. So now we have our verb identified. We can go to our subject and get our Latin form for that. So our subject here is the provinces. Our word for provinces in Latin is feminine. The number has to be plural. You can tell that either from the verb or from the English ending. So province in the plural is provinces. And then the nominative would be our case. Our function here, once again, is subject. Now we can come down to our sentence and translate what we have thus far. So remember, in English, we have subject, linking verb, predicate, nominative, or subject, verb, direct object. Latin actually prefers the word order subject, direct object, and then action verb. Or if we have a linking verb construction, which we have here, we could put that linking verb in the middle. So subject, linking verb, predicate, nominative. If you wanted to put your linking verb at the end, that would be fine as well. So translating our subject first, we have the provinces. Remember, Latin has no word for the, so it will be within our Latin form. And getting our word for provinces, we know our stem is pro wink. So pro winky. And then we want our nominative plural ending, which in Latin would be that AE. So we have pro winky I. And we know our verb will be sunt. So we have our subject and our verb and their Latin forms. Now we can come back to in Europe. So you see, in Europe is a type of prepositional phrase. If we ask, what question is this answering? The answer would be where the provinces are. They are in Europe. So we actually have our ablative place where. If you remember, our construction for ablative place where in Latin is in plus the ablative case. Now to identify the word Europe, its gender will be feminine. It's number, singular, we only have one of them, and it's case, 
So we identified in our construction will be ablative. So coming down to our sentence again, we can put in, and then our Latin word for Europe is Europa. And very important is to make this clear that this is ablative singular, we're going to need our macron over that A. So we have provincii sunt in Europa for our sentence translation. Coming up to four, four is a bit more complicated. Our English sentence reads, Troy is the girls' fatherland. So first step we do when translating from English to Latin is find the subject in the verb. Here, our subject is Troy, and our verb is is, so we can mark that down. And is is a linking verb. And we have the girls' fatherland. We'll map this out all right now and then fill in our functions and forms down here in one go. So we have is, linking verb, we expect a predicate nominative construction. Remember, anything that has an apostrophe or that is introduced by a preposition will never be your predicate nominative, your subject, direct object, and so on. So our predicate nominative here is actually the fatherland, which would leave the girls's, we have that apostrophe, now, apostrophe is a dead giveaway of our genitive of possession. So we have genitive of possession. Now we can come and identify our Latin forms. Start with your verb. So our verb is, is third. It's singular. It's tense is present. And our Latin translation of that would be est. Okay. You remember, we have our subject verb agreement, so our subject will also be singular here. And our subject, as we identified in our English sentence, is Troy. So Troy is feminine, singular. We have our subject verb agreement. It's case, since we are dealing with our subject, it will be nominative, and its fun function is subject. Okay. Now coming down here, we've identified fatherland as our predicate nominative. So our gender is feminine. Our number, fatherland, we only have one, singular. Case will be nominative, and Function will be predicate nominative. And the girls is, so our Latin word for girl, puella, is feminine. Here our number is plural. Our case, since we have a word showing possession, we have that apostrophe to show that in English, we will have our genitive case, and our function is possession. Now, making our sentence into Latin word order from the English. Remember, Latin, just like English, likes to start with your subject. So our Latin word for Troy is Troia. We want the short A for our nominative singular there. Linking verbs in Latin don't necessarily come at the end. In fact, they usually come in the center, just like and they do in English. So we can write our verb form there, est. Now, we can actually go to either girls' or fatherland here first. I'll explain why in a few seconds. I will start with fatherland. So fatherland we've identified as our predicate nominative. Our Latin word for fatherland is patria, and our stem would be patri, but we want to keep that short A ending because we want our nominative singular form. So we have patria as our Latin form. Going to our girls' in English, we have our genitive of possession, and we know we want our genitive plural form. So if you think of your Latin word for girl, you have puella, 
Pueli. So our stem is Puel. And then your genitive plural first declension ending would be Arum. So we have Puel Arum. So our translated English to Latin sentence would be Troia es patria puellarum.